Grandma got run over by a reindeer Walking home from our house Christmas Eve You can see there's no such thing as Santa But as for me and Grandpa, we believe She's been drinking too much eggnog And we begged her not to go But she forgot her medication and she staggered out the door in the snow. Yeah. When we found her quit. Jingle bells, Batman smells, Robin laid an egg. Oh yeah, and this pie crust too. Don't forget that. Eat the pie crust. And these spices. Uh, make sure I got cinnamon, uh, ginger, and be careful, this one's glass, uh, ground mace window. And these. I already drank one and I'm halfway through another, but these natty acids, they're the tall kind. Them too. Yeah, I'll, I'll fucking bag them. I, I'll even help you out here. Fucking. Merry Christmas. Oh my kitty feels like helping. Alright. Here we go. That's right. Oh, hi! Farmer Spaghetti here to wish you a Merry Christmas. Just here picking up some groceries and delivering them. It's a little side hustle I do when I have the time. People pay me to deliver their groceries. That's simple. I go out, I pick them up, buy them on their credit card, and deliver them back to their house. It's a great side hustle. Plus, I put that beer on my on their fucking card. Oh well, that's like your little Merry Christmas gift to Farmer Spaghetti. So after I'm done here, I'm going to deliver this bag of groceries right to their house. That's right, money's no object. That's right. Oh, shit, a duck and fucking, shit, a fucking DVD dollar bin. Fuck. Oh, this is fucking perfect. Nice. I love them fucking DVD bargain bins they have in fucking marketplace convenience stores and shit. One fucking dollar? Can't go fucking wrong there. I love this fucking movie. Oh yeah, this is perfect. My most favorite Christmas movie in the world that nobody's ever fucking heard of. Yep. Leslie Nielsen in. Santa who? Santa who with a question mark. And the picture on the front has like a question mark as a candy cane. Hey, <laughs> not fucking cute because it's Christmas and shit. First of all, it stars Leslie Nielsen as Santa Claus. Enough said in my opinion, but let me tell you more about it. Because I've seen this. It. my favorite Christmas movie. Farmer Spaghetti's allowed to have a favorite Christmas movie too. I'll give you a quick rundown. I'll rant through this shit real quick. And you'll want to see this shit. If you like Leslie Nielsen, I mean it's not his fucking, it's not fucking Airplane or the fucking Naked Gun movies. Well, first of all, it came out in the year 2000. That's before Leslie Nielsen died. Obviously, right? If I'm going to sit here and tell you about this, I'm going to take this fucking... Chair. I don't want to buy it. I just want to borrow I know you got a bunch of them for sale, but here we go. came out in the year 2000 as an episode of The Wonderful World of Disney. So there's like no theatrical release on this shit or anything. So old ass Santa, right? He's like having memory issues. He, he's going through his fucking clothes, finds a bunch of letters in there from like the early 70s and shit. And uh, his elf, his head elf, who in all these Christmas movies like this always have like a head elf and he's played by some actor I've fucking heard of. And this one is Tommy Davidson, you know the biter in Ace and Trur when nature calls? Yeah, yeah, Tommy fucking Davidson. So he plays this like angry tempered elf who's pretty much running the place, a high stress fucking guy because you know he's doing like everything, he's keeping saying his shit together. Alright fellas, listen up! So to clear his head, Santa goes out for a ride in his fucking sleigh. Doopa doopa doo, -doo flying along, flying along. And then some storm or something, he falls ass backwards out of his fucking sleigh and lands on some guy's fucking car in the middle of the city. I'm guessing New York City, but it looks like fucking, they probably filmed it in Canada or some shit. So he lands head first in the guy's car. He's totally fucking fine because he's Santa Claus. Guy's not phased by this. It doesn't know. Guy fell out of the sky landing on your car not dead and you, just, and you just think he's a regular old dude? Now the old guy has amnesia. Yeah, we were just um just looking for some sort of identification. You know, maybe we could call a family member or a friend. Uh, what's your name? Where, where do you live? Let me help you refresh your memory. You, you're in a Santa suit, which tells me you're interested in a job at the mall. I am. Well, then he should have come to my office, not here. Well, he must be the ambitious type. Go that extra mile, you know. Be, uh, he rented a terrific suit, and he seems like a very nice man, so I say we hire him. Peter. Of course, it isn't entirely up to me. I'm sorry, would you excuse us for a minute, please? I mean, he's perfect. Peter, the man has amnesia. 
okay, not completely perfect, but it's probably just temporary. Well, what if it's not? I mean, what if he doesn't get his memory back? Well, then he'll never remember what hit him. But also, in the same city, a fucking sleigh crashed and they found it. Nobody's questioning, they're questioning it, but not as much as you think they would. No one seems to believe that it's Santa's fucking sleigh. And then there's a bunch of deer that randomly showed up. And they're like being held in some fucking tree lot or something. So anyway, the main characters besides Santa are, you're gonna have like, in these movies, you're gonna have like some, you know, fucking love interest relationship, people trying to mend their fucking love life together or something. So they got uh, Blake Lively. If you know who fucking Blake Lively is, and you're probably from the same time period that I am, because she was in like, Not Quite Human. You even know what I'm talking about when I say Not Quite Human movies? Yeah, she was in those. There were three fucking Not Quite Human movies from the 80s. Alright? Maybe I'd do a review on them sometime. Shit. Those movies are fucking forgotten treasures, right? Anyway. More about Blake Lively. I talk about her real quick. Because back then, I thought she was real hot. Give me a kiss. She was also in an episode of Quantum Leap. The Dr. Ruth one. And, uh, she was in something else. I know. Oh, yeah. She was in Karate Kid 3, of course. She was a love interest in that one. So, Blake Lively and this other dude, who I've seen in absolutely nothing. He's such a squished up looking fucking... Guy, I don't know what to compare him to. He's got this. He's, he's just kind of a douche, and you're supposed to probably think that because he's like the bah humbug. I hate Christmas guy, and he's got good reason because when he was a kid, he was in an orphanage. Now this orphanage they showed at the beginning of the movie looks like a fucking clearly a matte painting, nice painting, but it looks like it's in the fucking 1800s or something. And then you go like, oh, 25 years later, and it's fucking to the year 2000. Oh, so he's from the 70s or early 70s or like what's saying that had a fucking coat. Anyway, you, they, they put a lot of things in here. It's not a badly written movie, actually. And I think about it. Why? It's not badly written at all. Cause they set up a lot of shit that gets answered in the end. Unlike some fucking shows I know lost. I mean, they actually set up everything in this movie. Everything gets answered pretty much. I mean, pretty much. It's, it's a fucking Wonderful World of Disney episode. It's starring Leslie. I mean, give it some credit. It's Leslie Nielsen as Santa. So he's still... It's like Frank Drebin Claus. Right? So... He's doing that same kind of humor. He's that same Leslie Nielsen playing it straight with his goofy. You're laughing him because he's Leslie Nielsen. I'm trying to figure out who he is. Kid trying to convince him he really is Santa. Everybody else trying to convince him he's just an old man with amnesia. Because there's these other people that show up who happened to lose their grandfather 10 years ago. And he kind of resembles him. And they think he might be him. But you know it's fucking not, obviously. I thought you'd like to know we got our first good lead. Yeah, some folks who think that uh, Santa is their missing grandfather. They, uh, they brought in an old photo and our computer guys enhanced it. They put on a beard, 10 years worth of wrinkles. And well, we gotta tell you, it looks like your guy. So Santa goes out and uh, goes clothes shopping, thinking he's a regular dude. And I uh, buys this stupid looking fucking <laughs> outfit. It's so, so, such a Leslie Nielsen type humor scene. He turns around, I've got this dumb fucking 70s outfit on. Looks like a, a pimp from the 70s or something. And he dyed his beard and hair. And it's fucking. It just. Probably, I think it's the funniest book I've seen in the movie, really. Sent him out on his own movie. Sent him to buy some clothes. What's the worst that could happen? What? I have nothing to do with it. Your... Your beard. They said it the hairdresser that this makes me look younger. What do you think? Yeah. And then other things that Leslie... Like, here's a line Leslie Nielsen says where he's like... It's such a Leslie fucking hey, Nielsen line. Would you teach me one of those Christmas songs? You don't remember a single carol? I don't even remember a married one. <laughs> That's so Leslie Nielsen, right? So, so anyway, back to the kid, right? He's in this orphanage with a kid. It looks like the 1800s, but it's, I guess, the early 70s. He's writing letters to Santa Claus, and the orphanage lady tells him the sad news that his dad never wants to see him again that's going to keep him in the orphanage. He gives the lady the letter to Santa and goes off to bed. And the uh, orphanage lady throws his letters to Santa in the fire and he sees this. Now he's like scarred by this for life now. For fucking life. So he's just like a humble guy, becomes a news reporter and has no heart and care what anybody wants to sell. So that's the kind of character he is. Anyway, his character is dating 
Robin Lively. They're sort of an item. But the son of Robin Lively from another relationship or something doesn't fucking like this guy because he's a big self-centered douche. Rightfully so. If he was a kid, he wouldn't like this guy. He don't give a fuck about him. He just wants to bang Robin Lively, which is sort of understandable. So they spend the whole movie taking care of fucking uh, Frank Drevenclaws, which is the funniest part of the movie. But basically the whole time, they're just trying to figure out who the hell this guy really is. Is he really Santa or not? Most people don't think he's Santa. They just think he's a random dude who got amnesia and don't remember who the hell he is. But looks a lot like Santa and kids love him and shit. So they're all convinced. Kids are convinced he's Santa. So while all this is going on, you got Tommy Davidson all high stress and pissed because Santa's fucking missing now. So he has to fly into the fucking city the with his little sister. elf buddies. Who are all these violent, angry fucking little elves. This is like pissed thing and they get stopped at the airport and shit. I mean, they're not, like, killing people, but if they had guns, they would definitely be blowing people's heads off. What's in the bags? Oh, uh, 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 uh. So, uh, <clears throat> what are you? Santa's little helpers? <laughs> Welcome to our country. <laughs> If they're using toys instead, so it's all cutesy and fun like. Yeah, like popping people don't hit. But they're violent and angry. They're really pissed. Just want to find Santa and get the fuck back to the North Pole. Alright? These are stressed elves. I don't know what Santa is, is working them too fucking hard or something, but they're really angry. They, they want to beat people up all the time. They get with pleasure. They got fucking teeth, slingshots with fucking clicky teeth in them and shit. Just say the word, Max. They just want to kill. They're violent little buggers. Really, they are. But but they're fun. It's sort of funny, I guess. I guess that sort of makes it, you know, again, worth watching. Violent Tommy Davidson biting. Again, with the biting. What is it with Tommy Davidson and biting? But yeah, yeah, they're really inventive elves. Torturing people with, uh, like, toys from the workshop. They're sort of like the, uh... What's that fucking guy? They're like the Equalizer. They're out there, like, using toys from the workshop to beat people up and shit. They don't actually kill anybody, they just like, you know, cause a mild inconvenience. Just annoying, really. It's all, don't worry, it's all harmless, family-friendly stuff. Like, even Farmer Spaghetti can get in on family-friendly stuff. He might seem like a violent guy, but at heart, he's really fucking sweet, isn't he? So the movie goes on for a little while, anyway. It's not that long, it's like an hour and a half or something. Anyway, the kid who's the only one to fucking believe does like the stupidest fucking thing. He... They took the sleigh to some department store, Santa's real sleigh, when it crashed, and they impounded it. I guess they just figured it's mine now, and put it up on some fake roof in a department store, just barely held on by two wires, and this dumb kid climbs inside of it, finds Santa's fucking letters to try and prove Santa's really fucking Santa, and then the thing's like wobbling and shaking, ready to rip off the fucking ceiling and fall to his death, and he's still fucking around, and he's like an idiot, yep. Like, no, what are you, dumb kid? Get the hell out of there. And then Santa goes up to rescue him, not knowing that he's, sort of knowing that he's, sort of knowing that he's Santa at this point, because people are starting to believe, like, oh, wait a second. That fucking guy who didn't believe the main character finally, you know, finds some evidence that convinces him he finds his fucking letter. Now, how could that be possible? Turns out, Santa comes up with some little story. Guy yeah, eventually breaks down at one point and tells Santa the whole story about how the orphanage lady burned his letter. And the Santa says, oh, was she Dutch or something like that? And the guy's like, mm, I don't know why. He's like, uh, would she be Danish or uh, Norwegian? Uh, I don't know why. Well, the Scandinavians have this custom that uh, uh, when they send letters to Santa Claus, they throw them on the fire and they believe that the smoke carries the letters to the North Pole faster than that. So she was throwing it in the fire so that it would, it would get to him quicker, not because she was being a bitch. So he was traumatized for nothing. He just happened to see it, and she never explained it because she was dumb too. So realizing this, he finds one of the letters that was in Santa's pocket, and it was one of, it was his letter, the one that got burned. How could he fucking have it if it got burned? The guy now suddenly believes that, oh my god, Leslie Nielsen really is Santa Claus. And this is right at the point that the dumb kids in fucking Santa's sleigh trying to prove it. And then Santa's getting convinced on the phone, oh yeah, you're Santa. So he runs to the fucking place, dumb kid's up there, he climbs up and try to save him. Kid's all scared, I don't want to get out, I'm going to die. He's, yeah, you're going to die, you're stupid. So uh, fucking Santa, being even stupider, climbs his big fat Santa ass in there. Like, that's going to help matters. He still doesn't remember he's Santa at this point. But of course, at the very nick of fucking time, as they're falling to their death, he realizes he's Santa Claus. And the sleigh, whoop, just starts hovering. 
and everybody's safe. And no, and all everybody sees, oh my god, it's Santa. It's really him, right in front of us. So yeah, pretty much it. He's saved today. He realizes he's Santa. The elves show up, and at this point, because Santa didn't know he was Santa, he shaves his fucking beard, looks all weird to them and shit. And I guess everybody lives happily ever after. Christmas is almost late, but he still manages to take off in time, deliver everything, and then fly back to the North Pole into this really, like, cool-looking animated map painting. It's obviously fake, but it looked really neat and pretty. And it's like, wow, that's the fucking North Pole? You barely showed that fucking place in the movie. It's a lot nicer than that boring fucking city you spent the whole movie in, but okay. I guess it was more about Santa comes to the city not knowing he's Santa, gets to live life as a human until he... You know, realizes, hey, I am Santa, and then gets to go back to the North Pole. And as like a bonus payoff, that guy they thought, the family they thought uh, that Santa was actually their grandfather, they actually have payoff for that shit. And then the real guy who they showed occasion to the movie watching TV in some old folks' home turns out to be the actual grandfather that family was looking for. So they get a happy ending too. Everybody gets a happy ending in this movie. They don't set up anything in this movie that they don't fucking answer or resolve in the end that I can think of. So in that sense, it's not a bad fucking movie at all for something nobody's ever fucking heard of. It wasn't even a real movie, I guess. It was like on a fucking episode of The Wonderful World of Disney back in 21 years ago. I never even heard of this shit until recently, to be honest. Mm-hmm. So it's worth a watch, in my opinion. Especially if you're a Leslie Nielsen fan. He makes it all worth it. God rest his soul. I'll take this too, bartender. One dollar DVD. Put it on, uh, put it on the same credit card. So give it a whirl sometime. It's not going to win any Academy Awards or anything, but it's certainly not the worst holiday in the wheel scene. Well, I gotta get going. I've already wasted way too much time in this fucking marketplace. There are people waiting for this fucking delivery. Some of it's probably going bad, I don't know. Grandma got run over by a reindeer. Fuck it. Walking home from our house Christmas Eve. Fuck yeah, you can... They said it the hairdresser that this makes me look younger. What do you think? So yeah, here he is playing Santa again back in 1991. Apparently this isn't the first time Leslie Nielsen has played Santa Claus. Yup, he's been Santa before. I guess somebody just thought, hey, this is perfect. He has such a Santa feel. Make Leslie Nielsen Santa again and again, I guess. It's some movie called All of Them for Christmas and it stars Thor Burt. Dad's played by fucking Kevin Nealon and Ethan Embry. Phillips, Randall, whatever.